no one following me. My, my family, some friends I knew, uh, a little feed burner number was about, I don't know, less than 100. Uh, like everyone else, you kind of start with nothing. And in my previous life, I had done stuff on the internet. I'd run a gaming network that had 75 million page views a month. So I kind of had an idea of what traffic was, and I did not have it. <laughs> and so I kind of had this come to Jesus moment where it was like, all right, if you're going to do this, what are you doing? I have no background in journalism. I'm not a writer. I did not get a degree in English, journalism, communications, or marketing. I have no background in the tourism industry. So I kind of had to start from square one. And what I did is I went to a magazine store in Hong Kong, and I bought every travel magazine on the rack. And I went, and I kind of had to figure out what it was that people want. I mean, I really had to think of this at a high, at a high level. Now, I've kind of developed a reputation for ripping on magazines and newspapers. Um, but the fact is, while I think there are problems with their business model, uh, there's a lot we can learn. People buy them. You know, Millions of people buy these things, so clearly they're doing something right. And what I was trying to figure out was, what is it that they're doing that people want? At a really, really fundamental level. I wasn't trying to get hints in regards to, you know, how to write better or anything else. It's just, what do people want? And so I went through and I, I documented kind of at a very high level um, what they were doing. And so for the purposes of this presentation, I went and I recreated that. I went to Barnes & Noble. I got the latest issues of uh, National Geographic Traveler, Travel and Leisure, uh, Budget Travel, Cotton Ass Traveler, and a farm magazine which sent me a complimentary issue and I had in the mail. <laughs> and what I did is I went through and I counted the number of countries and states that were in each, that were just mentioned. So Rome, Naples, Venice, Florence, all just count as Italy. So this is an extremely rough estimate of what is being done in each issue, one issue of a magazine. And this is what I came up with. On average, about 40 countries were, were, were mentioned. This is not including advertising, this is not including letters to the editor, in one issue of one magazine. Now, let me ask you, this is a travel blog conference. How many of you have been to 40 countries in your life? A few. How many people outside this auditorium have been to 40 countries in their life? <laughs> not many. But people are buying these magazines. They are buying it. And there is something that we needed to learn from that. So even though human beings are not traveling to this many locations, and they will never travel to this many locations, they are still making an investment in travel media. That was an interesting conclusion. Something to think about. Story number two. This takes place in Peru in 1910. And I don't know if you've heard of this man before, but uh, this is Hiram Bingham III. Hiram Bingham was a really interesting guy. He was the governor of the state of Connecticut. He was a U.S. senator. He was a proctor to Woodrow Wilson when he taught at Princeton. He was a professor at Yale. And many people believe he was the inspiration for the character Indiana Jones. And Hiram Bingham was the guy who discovered, he didn't really discover it, uh, but he brought it to the world's attention, Machu Picchu. Okay? And what he did is, Rather than just discovering it like many Europeans did, they went to some place with non-Europeans and they, they found it, uh, he took photos. And he, brought, he came back two times in 1915 and 1918, I think, with the National Geographic Society expedition. And what did the National Geographic Society, of course, do? They published these photos in their magazines. And people went nuts. Because for the first time, they could see with their own eyes what was going on uh, these explorations and these fantastic discoveries people were making around the world. And we all know the stereotypes, right, of reading National Geographic and bare dressed of tribal women and things like that. Uh, that. That is not the travel porn part of the porn thing. But, uh, <laughs> this is uh, a natural photo. That's Hiram Bingham up there. That's a hand painted uh, shot taken from one of the expeditions. This is a photo of Machu Picchu uh, taken, I think, in 1915. And I also, before I started traveling, I was a big fan of National Geographic. I have one of the largest collections of National Geographic magazine in the world. I mean, I don't just have a couple stacks of them. When I like moved out of my house, by weight, this was by far the largest thing I owned was these magazines and books. Um, this is a photo from 1921, National Geographic. This is the very first issue of National Geographic ever 
uh, published in, in 1888, and it was an academic journal at the time, right? These were the, the proceedings of the National Geographic Society. There were no images whatsoever. This is the cover in 1915. Looks a little bit nicer. This is the cover in 1960. There's an image. And we all know this, right? We all know, you think National Geographic, you think photography. One of the other things I noticed when I picked up these travel magazines is we, bloggers attract a lot of writers. There aren't many photographers here because photographers self-identify as photographers. They hang out in photography forums, photography blogs, not necessarily travel. But an article isn't just written, it also has visual imagery, especially the lead article in these magazines. Pick up anyone you want on the way home to the airport, grab a magazine and open it up. And you will find that for these lead articles, look, this is, this is all photos, right? And then there's text. And then often for any article, you'll see continued on page 128. And you flip to the back of the book, and there's the big wall of text. It's photography which grabs people in, right? Now, I've got nothing against writing, but I don't care if you're William Shakespeare, you can't describe that woman's eyes with words. You just, you just can't. Now, the photo doesn't tell the whole story. There's a whole story behind this. They went back and they found the woman, and, and 